Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to uh, solar EVs and uh, kilowatts. It's, uh, we'll take a look today at the uh, November stats for our uh, Solar Edge. Uh, so it's uh, been uh, a little while since I've been able to do this, just getting around to it in time. Um, but nevertheless, these can always be reviewed at any time and just give you a broad overview of uh, just how the uh, solar uh, generation or not the generation works or doesn't work uh, at, in the uh, sort of um, uh, winter months here in the UK. Um, we live in Berkshire. We have a uh, seven and a half uh, kilowatt uh, a solar array of JA Solar 310 panels. There are 25 of them on the roof. And then we have a five kilowatt uh, inverter, which is oversized to 150%. Um, we also then have some My Energy devices, Eddy and uh, Zappi. The Eddy uh, diverts any excess solar uh, that would otherwise have gone back to the grid and uh, diverts that to our uh, hot water. Then the MyEnergy Zappi um, works as a conventional wall charger, but also uh, in the same way that the Eddy works, will use any excess energy and ex excess solar that's produced, not that there is that much this time of year, uh, and we'll put that uh, into the car, uh, assuming it's uh, plugged in, of course. Um, so just having a look at uh, November, um, I'm just going to click down here because I was just playing around with this uh, earlier on. We, in terms of what we produced to what we were projected to produce, we are always over. So this is my third month review now. So we did September, October, November. September was a fantastic month um, uh, for Sun. So we, we really did very, very well in there. So over 700 uh, kilowatts, I seem to remember, uh, which was about 50% over and above what we were predicted. So a very good month there. Uh, October, um, obviously a lot less, but, but more than predicted. And uh, November was only about 10% more than uh, what we were predicted. So at least we are on the plus side, but um, a pretty uh, poor month uh, overall. Um, so looking back at November 20, uh, we can see just along the top, I'll just give you a rundown if this is the first one that you've seen. Um, the platform that I'm using is um, Solar Edge. They're the people that make the inverter. They've got uh, an online platform uh, of which uh, once your installer uh, installs the panels and the inverter, they register your system uh, with Solar Edge and they give you access uh, to that data uh, via a login, uh, username and password, etc., as, as you would expect. Um, so then you get presented with this data, this, uh, this data uh, here. There's a little bit more at the top, but that shows my address and stuff. So I'm not keen on showing that and a picture of the house, but you, know, you don't need to see that really. Um, you have uh, day, week, month, uh, billing cycle, if you are interested in doing that. Uh, I don't. And then we've got uh, the whole uh, year of our, for our production uh, here as well. So I'm just going to uh, focus here on uh, the month, although just looking at that year, it does say there 1.39 mega watts almost back to the future styly so that's actually quite nice to see um anyway uh back to it then so from the 1st of november to the 30th of november you can see that our system production was 244.47 uh kilowatts we used about uh, 80 percent of that which is excellent um one 194.69 kilowatts we exported uh 49 kilowatts at um at uh, 5p so that's pretty reasonable um uh yeah i mean really we don't really want to be exporting much at all because you only get 5.5p back my average weighted use which i'll show you later on it's about 8p so there's no point selling it back at eight uh, sorry at 5.5p and buying it in at eight you really want to see this if you can down to down to zero but um you know, sometimes when you're out, the hot water's filled up and you're out in the car, um, there's not much going on at home, then, you know, it's inevitable that you're going to be exporting uh, something. We don't have a battery. That's the other thing. So that's probably where uh, we could probably um, uh, soak up, you know, most, if not all of that, if we had a battery. But looking at the costings, um, I can't make that pay. Um, it's a 20 year payment back um, which if we're looking at it financially and financially only and that's how i tend to look at things um 
uh, it doesn't pay. So there'll be no batteries here for uh, for a while until they come down by at least 50 percent. Um, our overall consumption uh, for November was 827, which might sound like a lot. Uh, but remember, we have an electric car, uh, a Nissan uh, Leaf 40 kilowatt. Uh, so we plug that in quite a bit. Um, and so, yeah, we, you know, we, what you'd normally put as petrol in the car, we're putting in is electricity. So um, you put 20 kilowatts in at a time or 30 kilowatts, as I often do. You can see you don't have to do that very often on your commute uh, before you're up to sort of, um, you know, three, four, five hundred kilowatts worth of um, charging use. So 827, uh, as we mentioned earlier, 194.69 was uh, self-consumption, but we then ended up importing um, 633. So that's what we've actually paid for. Um, and I'll show you the billing on that um, uh, a little later on. Um, it goes through uh, days here. So you can see where the reds uh, peak well up and above um, solar uh, consumption and solar production there are maybe one or two days here in the early part where uh, we saw that you know solar production uh, outperforms um, consumption um, but you can see here with the uh, with the imports here it's some of these days are quite high because this are, these are commuting days to work I've got a hundred mile round trip so um, you know we obviously zap the electricity there um, quite a bit uh, and then here we go we've got our import to export comparison uh, along the bottom here um, yeah I mean export as you can imagine this time of year is, isn't very good the Sun comes up at about 8 30 in the morning it's very low in the sky and disappears at about I don't know three o'clock uh, in the afternoon so it's you know it's really really quite poor you can see the sunrise and sunset tables here you know the sunset is when it's about you know six degrees below the horizon you, you know, and it's behind the houses off to our right so we don't we don't get it and we're southeasterly facing as well so come that time in the afternoon we've essentially lost it this time of day by about 2 30 and we, we're basically covering about i would say um base load really from around 2 2 30 in the afternoon this time of year excuse me while i slurp on some tea um yeah, so our base loads about 300, 400 watts with two fridge freezers and, um, you know, general stuff sort of plugged in. I don't go around unplugging it. Um, and then we come down to the bottom here, um, comparative energy. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. I mentioned to you September was a really, really good month. We had nearly 700 uh, kilowatts, um, 400 here in October, uh, November and December uh, looking um, quite poor. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's have a look at it uh, day by day then, shall we? And I'll just give you an idea of um, um, what's uh, what's happening. And if I take us to the 1st of November and just kind of show you how this illustration works and some of the things to kind of look out for to kind of give you an idea of how the sun uh, moves around the sky and what sort of profile you might see on a good day uh, or uh, or on a bad day. Um, this is the perfect example, but you'll see here overnight uh, we're around sort of 700, 600, um, 500, 400, 300, 3 to 400 here is our base load overnight. Uh, we sort of wake up in the morning, everyone's getting ready for school and for work, and so the kettle's on and the oven goes on perhaps. Um, these are these are spikes so these are probably more likely to be um you know kettle sort of thing uh sun comes up at around 8 30 in the morning you can see this is a bright start to the day uh we got to nearly sort of five kilowatts my inverters ca uh, capped at five so i don't think we'll see any limiting this month because um well we might do we, there might have been some days where that was uh over five kilowatts but we'll see um, and then you'll see here, this is our self-consumption here. You see this moves around with the sun. Uh, this is typically the eddy, which is really clever. As soon as it notices some excess solar, it pumps it straight into the uh, hot water system, which is great. The zappy is not quite as good as that because it needs a minimum 1.4 kilowatts to work. Um, and so, and it takes, I have a 30 second time delay, so it doesn't keep clicking in and out. Um, so it, it's not as, uh, a peaky curve uh, as as it is uh, or as efficient perhaps you might argue as the um, as the eddy 
so there you go and then sun drops down and then of course come towards um uh well my, my children come home from school at around three o'clock three thirty we normally have dinner then because they're, they're they're ravenous uh and then we the odd kettle going on here at sort of late in the evening um, going on to the next day um, wow what's going on here so you can see uh, during the time of night here in the early hours of the morning um, we've got some charging here what we have got with the my energy zappy um, and I've, I've, I've explained in my previous videos we're also on octopus uh, energy and I, I'll show you some of the billing later on in the video um, but there is a tie up between uh, my energy and octopus where they will take the um, price per half hour uh, unit price from uh, my, my uh, octopus energy and they will feed that data into the my energy uh, platform uh, so you can set your car up to say you want uh, 20 kilowatts or a certain percentage um, and the zappy uh, looks into the octopus energy half hour uh, data uh, which is released after 4 30 every day or there or thereabouts sometimes it's a bit later um and it looks at that data and then says okay this is when it's the cheapest time to charge you set it all up on the web or on your phone uh but it's a web-based uh, platform so you have to have a, a shortcut on your phone if you're using ios and um it'll go ahead and and uh, a charge on, on that profile so you're always getting the cheapest charges it's really really good so here you might see some peaks here where it charged uh and then dropped and then charged again and then dropped and then and then charged again um yeah so that's uh, that's pretty good if it's particularly cheap we'll even have the eddy do the same thing but we make sure that's below about two and a half p um per kilowatt and that happens because our gas is about 2.8 so it doesn't make any sense to um charge the hot water with the electricity unless it's cheaper than gas um, so coming over to uh, the next day then uh, this this is a pretty good day again a lot of charging at night time and then um, a few bits and pieces I don't know what quite goes on here maybe it's a washing machine or a dishwasher or something uh, and then we've got a where, where you see the sharpness at the tops here this is simply because um, well, we have got a little bit of uh, peaking there haven't we have a bit of a cap at five kilowatts there where it goes flat um, where, you, where the sun kind of comes out, goes behind a cloud, comes out again for a little while. What you really want is a nice bell curve like this, uh, which in the summertime you will do from like five in the morning, it goes up and then it remains flat at around five and then sort of comes, oh, it's always around five, but you see what I mean? It's a much flatter bell curve. You can see here, this is like 7.30 in the morning till four in the afternoon. We're getting less than about sort of two kilowatts, uh, no, sorry, 200 watts here. Um, so the sun is low in the sky comes up late uh, in the morning and and sat and sets quite early in the afternoon okay moving on uh, to the next day uh, this is a nice day this is a this is a good example of a good winter's day so sun up in the morning straight away up towards uh, 5k a little bit of capping uh, it's quite annoying this this thing isn't it uh, a little bit of capping here i can't chase it uh, at the top and then slowly coming down from the rest obviously no clouds in the sky uh, and you can see here our cell consumption the eddy is powering on powering off using all of that well using a large part of that excess uh, energy there it may even be the cars plugged in here as well because it goes up to nearly 5k and then uh, and then comes down and tracks it uh, which is which is really that's a, that's a nice bell curve for a win this is not a nice bell curve for a winter's day and again you can see a few more peaks uh, peaks going on here but again the cell consumption eddy is tracking the sun all day I, th I think out of the old devices that we have the eddy I think is the smartest and, and most efficient uh, we have uh, it's it's working all the time um, yeah and again another day here where it's sort of cloudy and, and uh, a little bit peaky. Um, uh, a fair bit of excess here so this is uh, an example here where the sort of eddy peaks off so it's only a three kilowatt uh, heater we've got on uh, on our thermostats so anything above three kilowatts um, you know, it, it'll basically be going back to the grid so if I had my car plugged in I was probably at work at this point if a car was plugged in then it would um, it would probably take over because there's an excess of a couple of kilowatts there and it would have and it would have come in and then what it would do is it would cut in and out uh, all day 
So you see, it's quite interesting because, you know, we go through days with lots of excess and then you come to a day like uh, the 11th, uh, so the 8th of, of November, and there's practically no sun at all. You know, it can really be pretty grim and you're struggling to maintain your um, your base load. So here we have another uh, another night. So anything between sort of midnight and sort of five in the morning, anything like this is is the car charging up to about seven kilowatts here. Again, a terrible day again for solar. Um, I mean, look at this consumption, 32 kilowatts. And what was it the previous day? 41 kilowatts. So when you're charging the car, it's massive. Yeah, you know, as you can, I mean, there are people with two two cars. I mean, it's 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 huge. Um, yeah, I'm just going to scroll through these now because these are pretty okay. And here's a day where there's bit of sun, bit of cloud, bit of charging overnight. Uh, some of these are appliances as well. So one of the other things that Octopus Energy does uh, gives you the half hourly rates. There's an app uh, called Octopus Watch, um, which is really useful. And uh, you can set a slide bar on the top, tell it how long you want to, your appliance to run for, and it will tell you when the cheapest time of the day or night, um, more often night, uh, to use it. So that's really quite cool. So sometimes you'll see some peaks here where um, where we're uh, running or even a tumble dryer as well as washing machine dishwashers etc that's a funny old day that isn't it really a uh, very cloudy on off uh, day with uh, lots of peaks during. i think we were probably at home that day <laughs> uh, i'm not too sure when the 11th 11 11 well, that's not a great day is it uh, well 9 11 is worse uh, yeah it's a lot lots of peaks uh, lots of peaks in there Eleventh, eleventh. That's remembrance, isn't it? Eleventh day of the eleventh month. Yeah, it's remembrance Sunday. Yeah, uh, we were around. Um, yeah, another another day, another day of sort of peak peakness uh, here, here, going right up towards sort of five k. But we're not we're not capped at all, so sun, the sun wasn't that strong. And looking at November, it doesn't get high enough in the sky for long enough uh, to actually peak. So uh, I've mentioned in some of my other videos why it's really important to try and get as much on your roof as possible because. Um, you know, what you're trying to do is you're you're trying to protect yourself um, for those poor days. You know, any solar generation can produce four kilowatts um, on a nice sunny day. If you've got a you know four kilowatt array and a and a, and a four kilowatt inverter for it, or three point six kilowatt inverter, which is um, uh, can take up to take up to five, I think, three point six. Um, but on the cloudy days, you know, like the days I was showing you earlier on, you'd struggle to generate enough electricity for your uh, solar for your um, for your base load so it's at days like this that um, this is you, when, when you're building your solar uh, array uh, with uh, being designed by your installer um, you know look at the cost um, but it's 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 better to try and you know try and fill your roof with as many panels as possible as long as you, as long as it's in, within budget um, because it's 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 on the poor days uh, that you'll see the benefit um, you know you'll have a much uh, higher uh, peaks uh, during during cloudy days and for longer and you can see here I mean, we've got seven and a half kilowatts on the roof here I mean for, for a lot of the time the solar production that's like, that's like 400 watts it's nothing but if I, I've got seven and a half kilowatts on the roof, if I only had a four, um, it could be well down into one or two, one or two hundred watts. And, you know, I wouldn't even be running my fridge, which is hopeless. Again, it's, it's all it's all dependent on budget and what, what, what you can do in the size of your roof at the end of the day. If you're producing something, it's something, isn't it? But we have got a big roof, so it just kind of made sense for us to do that. Um, yeah, so a little bit more generation at night time, and then you can see here, sort of about eight o'clock in the morning till, and it's it's coming back up to, um, about three thirty now as we get to later on into the month. So sixteenth of November, nothing, nothing. But where you're seeing all this blue here is actually green as well. It's just that um, you know it's self consumption and solar production, but because there's not much solar the consumption is covering it because that's the eddy i would recommend it's one of the best things we've, we've done actually with the eddy um yeah and then another sort of uh, peaky day here obviously we were probably here at the weekend yeah uh so yeah a pretty poor day um and look at this um this is kind of around 
there you go 2 30 in the afternoon we are we are pretty much out of uh solar here yep same here uh 3 30 we're down to about you know 76 watts I mean, it's really not not much at all and a few a few um areas here where it sort of uh, exceeds the uh, consumption not much charging gone over these other few days probably off at this point and no need to charge the car i could definitely be a bit more efficient with this because um i need to be charging the car even when i'm not using it because there are times when it's actually quite cheap and it goes below 5p so look out for those days if you are on octopus uh, agile um but even if you're not using the vehicle, get it charged up to 80% because it's, it's obviously cheaper to do it that way, even if you're not using it. So it's ready for when you do when you do need it. I could definitely be more economical there. Um, you'll notice sometimes on, on some of the shots I'm showing you here that everything looks like it's exploded. Um, the scale on the left hand side here changes uh, depending on the, where, where your peaks are for the day. See, we were 8K here, whereas the previous day we weren't only up to 4K. OK, so obviously we were using car charging quite a bit here. Again, no solar here at all. We're just basically the back half of this month was pretty much just using the grid, essentially. There's a break here and I think we had to turn the solar off for some. No, no, let's turn the power off. Uh, to the house uh, we had a problem with our electrics so um, the whole thing went off for a short while that's why there's a that's why there's a gap there okay 25th not much to report there uh 26th uh yeah a few peaks outside we've obviously because we're not generating much solar now and the eddy isn't able to support us during the day um we're running the gas hot water uh, boiler uh, obviously we're it's cold now in november anyway so we've got the heat we've got the uh, boiler running in any case um but we're uh, probably pulling in about what's a 22 kilowatt boiler and it's on for about an hour so with some losses probably about 18 to 20 kilowatts of hot water going in uh, and so when the eddy comes on it's it's pretty much at temperature when it gets started which is why you're not seeing much um generation there and again if i knew what the weather's going to be like tomorrow and it was reliable I, i'd probably be a bit more economical with when i'm using the um gas boiler as well for the uh, for the central heating if i knew it was going to be sunny the next day i probably wouldn't put it on uh so there you go uh, another another sort of peaky day with very very poor solar uh, 29th uh, 30th and then i think that's the first of december so that is basically it for uh, the month of november just having a look at this now so september stats from the first of september to the 30th of september just to sort of give you an idea of how things are changing in terms of our uh, consumption here um excuse me um in september because the solar was just so fantastic uh, we only um, consumed 360 kilowatts um uh, our average unit rate was 10.2 and a standing charge of uh, 21 so not a um not a very expensive uh, month that and our total electricity cost for the month uh which included car charging and everything was um was 43 pounds which is which is pretty good i think um uh, and this is all from octopus watch as you can see on the top here it'll generate a, a graph for you uh, here you can see what you're using uh, where you're using it in the time of the day you can see that most of our usage our, our premium usage is during the flat this is the average price here so it says average import unit rate pence per kilowatt down here somewhere around sort of six seven p as the day goes on uh, it increases then there's a bit of a lull around lunchtime and then at four o'clock in the afternoon it peaks up to around 30 pence uh, 35 pence on some days it's just, this is just average here so really what you want is when this is low you want high usage and when this is high you want low usage so it's an inverse curve is really what you want to see um, coming on to uh, October slightly more now in fact almost yeah about a third, a third more 66 pounds um, 
so yeah we're 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 not producing quite so much uh, solar here uh, but the unit rate has dropped down quite a bit 8.73 uh, uh, so we use 600 uh, kilowatts at a price uh, at 66 with a, with a standing charge uh, in there as well so you can see here we, we pretty much doubled our uh, consumption uh, and then as we go on to November um, again 600 again so similar uh, with an average unit rate of 9.83 agile's taken a bit of a hammering during November and December there's been no wind it's been overcast not much green renewable energy around coal as um, burners have been started up again lots of gas being used um, so the average price has, has gone up uh, a little bit but actually 9.83 I'm quite pleased with um, remember your weighted average that's what this means it's you know depends on what you're using so if you're using a lot at night time you're charging your car a lot your average weighted price will come down if you're not and you're using it more during this period because you're cooking meals for the family between four and seven in the evening then your average weighted will go up but ultimately what you're trying to achieve is an inverse curve here so when this is low you want high here when this is high you want it low here as best as you can well, hopefully that's everything um, and giving you a bit of an insight into our November stats. Uh, if you like it, please like it. Uh, if you want to see some more, please subscribe. But either way, thanks very much for watching.